consistency and data integrity in bright field microscopy and macroscopic imaging, a review of ChromaCal 2.0. I'm Mark Clymer, Director of Marketing for Datacolor ChromaCal, and I'm joined by my colleague Mark McNulty, ChromaCal's General Manager. Hello, all. We're also pleased to be joined by Jerry Sedgwick from Imaging and Analysis to provide expert commentary during this webinar. Hello. Today we'll review why consistency and data integrity in imaging are difficult to achieve. We'll follow the review with a discussion of ChromaCal and provide a live software demonstration. We'll conclude the webinar with a Q&A session. At any time during the webinar, feel free to enter your questions uh, within the GoToWebinar control panel. Before we begin, let me first introduce our guest commentator, Jerry Sedgwick. Jerry is a recognized authority on microscopy, digital imaging, and the use of Photoshop for scientific images. He's authored or co-authored two books, several book chapters, numerous articles, and peer-reviewed journals, including Science, PMAS, Circulation, and most recently, the Journal of Histochemistry and Cytochemistry. Jerry has taught courses and delivered numerous workshops and presentations on scientific imaging and image integrity at scientific conferences. And he's directed a core microscopy facility at the University of Minnesota for more than 15 years. Jerry is actively involved in consulting services on scientific imaging and image analysis through his company Imaging and Analysis, LLC. And he's an active contributor to the blog colorintegrity.com. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. So why are image consistency and data integrity so hard to achieve? That's a really good question. We first need to recognize that the world of bright field microscopy is full of imaging inconsistencies. Shown here are just a couple of examples from books and papers, presentations, and websites. Uh, Jerry, what's your experience? Uh, in my own experience, uh, this is so true to see uh, these images the way that they appear here. They appear, they're all over the board in, uh, in terms of white balancing contrast and, and in color inconsistency. Imaging should be straightforward, right? We really want our specimen to be accurately and consistently captured in a high quality digital image allowing us to focus on our evaluation and analysis. But there are many impediments throughout the process preventing us from achieving this straightforward goal, many of which you may not even be aware of. With digital equipment, the science of color management becomes a critical element. Between uh, the microscope equipment and camera, a digital image is captured without any assurance of its accuracy. The image is then rendered on a monitor uh, but there are disconnects really throughout this system. And this is compounded with multiple users of equipment, multiple imaging sessions, and multiple systems. Here are a couple of uh, examples of image con uh, inconsistency. Jerry, what can you tell us about these images? So these images appeared in the uh, article in the Journal of Histochemistry and Cytochemistry. And in this instance, uh, guess what? I'm the expert microscopist. And uh, among three cameras, I picked the best camera uh, of the three for at, at least providing consistent white balance uh, and ease of setting uh, manual uh, exposures. And you could see in session one and in session two that these images are quite different in terms of color and in terms of uh, white balancing or how, how neutral the background whites are. Uh, these are uh, just uh, three examples from uh, an entire set of images that we did for this, for this particular paper. Thanks, Jerry. Well, between the microscope software and especially if we are in a multi-user environment, we can't and, and shouldn't expect uh, to be able to just sit down at our imaging systems capture images and move on to evaluation. Uh, that expectation can only lead to tremendous frustration. Uh, despite the improvements in software and the user interface and equipment, imaging just doesn't seem to get simpler. In fact, it seems even more complicated. Uh, we need to get and give better training on the use of the microscope 
uh, and the imaging software. And even with such discipline in using microscopes and, and imaging software, uh, we often try to fix those problems with programs like Photoshop. Back to you, Jerry. You've been a supporter of Photoshop. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Photoshop is a really powerful program, and it's, uh, it's very useful for scientific imaging. However, I have always felt a little bit uncomfortable about the way in which uh, bright field images have been corrected in Photoshop, and most of it has to do with being able to repeat the step and get the same results. Uh, unfortunately, you have to use a color eyedropper tool to click on a certain point in the image to, to create white balance, and then the idea is that the right colors will follow. Uh, and this generally is not the case and it was the best that was out there, uh, but it still had room for improvement, especially along the lines of uh, subjectivity. So what's really needed are tools that are going to make uh, this whole process easier, faster, and, and more repeatable, all without human bias. Data Color Chromacal is a new tool developed specifically for the rigors of scientific imaging. Uh, the concept behind Chromacal is really quite simple. Establish a common baseline to deliver consistent, high-quality images for repeatable imaging results, less overall effort, and removing subjective adjustments so that you ensure data, uh, image data integrity. Overall, you get better consistency in less time. Uh, Chromacal is a comprehensive solution with three primary components, a calibration slide for your session profile, software to transform your specimen images, and a sensor and software to deliver a calibrated monitor. Let me first briefly talk about monitor calibration. A calibrated monitor is critical to both viewing uh, images as they're intended, but also during image capture, since we use uh, the image that's on that monitor to make decisions about your image acquisition settings. Unlike software in, and operating uh, system-based adjustments, like in Windows, uh, Chromacal uses a sensor and software to objectively measure your monitor's color and then tunes that color to industry standards. Jerry, how important is monitor calibration for you? It, it's a, it's important for color, but I think it's especially important for tones. Uh, as it turns out, uh, it can be difficult to see tones that are very close to white and tones that are very close to black. And generally, uh, in, to my way of thinking, I'd like to have a calibrated monitor because I want to be able to see uh, details that are in the darker parts of the image and in the brighter parts of the image. And for that reason, it's essential that uh, monitors be calibrated. Good point, Jerry. I also want to note that the truer the color rendering on your computer monitor, the more consistent and accurate your printouts are going to be. Chromacal uses a proprietary color calibration slide and your existing microscope to capture a fingerprint of your imaging session. Then capture the rest of your specimen images during that session. Bring the fingerprint or the Chromacal slide image uh, into the software and calibrate your specimen images. The result is consistent, high-quality, high-integrity images for evaluation and analysis. I'll turn the microphone and control over to uh, my colleague Mark McNulty here, and he'll be providing a live demonstration of the Chromacal software. Uh, make you presenter here, Mark. And Take it away, Mark. All right, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Uh, what I'll go through now is a brief overview of the Chromacal image calibration software and also highlight some of the recent enhancements that we've made um, just recently in version 2.0. So what you're looking at right now is the main screen of the Chromacal software. And let me note in the right-hand portion here that the software tells you provide you a diagnostic of whether you're using a Chromacal calibrated monitor. So again, Mark Clymer spoke about the importance of marrying both image calibration and monitor calibration. So this is a uh, message that will uh, give you assurance that you're calibrated or 
um, suggests that you calibrate um, with Chromacal. By the time you get into the image calibration software, you would have already, as Mark said, captured your calibration slide image um, and your specimen images. So the first thing that you do in the software is to open that calibration slide image. And the idea behind this screen is that you want to place one of these sampling boxes within each of the uh, color patches. And for illustrative purposes, I've shown um, an image that both captures the large and small matrix. Um, for purposes at the microscope, you only need to capture one or the other. We generally recommend the larger. And we generally recommend that you fill the field of view with that um, calibration matrix image. To align within this screen, it's really rather simple. You put your cursor in the upper left-hand corner of the uh, matrix that you want to use, uh, hold the mouse button down, and drag it to the lower right. And at that point, you release your mouse button, and for the most part, you should be fully aligned. The uh, squares don't have to be perfectly aligned in the middle as long as they're within each color patch. There are some additional tools on the left-hand side to uh, do other things to align the matrix, and there's descriptions as you put your cursor over them about things to do um, with each of those tools. Um, please also note that in each corner is a representation or a reference um, color that should be used um, to align the matrix. So, for example, in this lower right-hand corner should be the white patch. And as long as the white patch is here, then the orientation of the color matrix is correct. You also may have noticed that the orange squares turn to blue. That's an indication that you're aligned. Plus, we offer this diagnostic box in the lower left-hand corner in which we provide not only a text of whether your alignment is correct, um, but once that is correct, it also provides you diagnostics on linearity as well as exposure. Linearity is extremely important for both uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, evaluation of specimens. It ensures that there's consistency in the underlying data. Uh, one of the recent features that we added was the ability to hyperlink by clicking that linearity uh, text, hyperlink to the linearity plot. Um, this plot is now also uh, resizable, but basically it's a representation of the red, green, and blue channels and whether they're falling across, obviously, a straight line. Um, so there are regression numbers in here to give you the, the, the degree of compliance, um, or you can simply rely on the linearity result, in this case being good. Um, the two that will allow you to proceed are good or within tolerance. We also do identify the exposure that was used on the calibration slide image. It looks at this white patch. Um, the tendency sometimes is to overexpose the calibration slide image. What you're basically looking for through the microscope is a dull white on the white patch and a noticeable um, graying of that patch on the one above it. And if that's the case, then generally your exposure will be good. So at this point, um, you've done everything that you need to do to calibrate the specimen images captured during the same imaging session. So let me go into uh, calibration. In this case, I'll do a single image, and then I'll show you the uh, batch mode. So let me bring up a uh, calibration slide image. And immediately, you'll see a before and after of your uh, uncalibrated or raw image on the left and the chromacal calibrated image on the right. Um, so it happens that quickly and without any additional interface on your part. Now, we have all the traditional viewing tools. You can click the mouse button to zoom in. Uh, you can use the hand tool to pan around. Um, just recently, uh, we also added a full screen icon up here. So if you click that, you'll see the image represented uh, on the full screen view. Uh, notice on the lower right-hand corner here, it identifies the image that you're looking at as calibrated. And you can uh, use the space bar to toggle between the uncalibrated uh, image and the calibrated image. Click any other button and it'll return to the comparison screen. Uh, we also provide a few other things of note on this screen. First of all, we do allow you to change contrast. So we have a contrast slider. Um, we find that contrast is very much a, a personal user preference so um, and often image dependent. 
Um, we also have uh, what we call a reference standard label, and that's the text that's shown here on the bottom of the image, and you can either toggle to include it or not. Uh, what we generally find is users want to represent, Chromacal users want to represent to their uh, uh, colleagues or their customers um, that they used a higher degree of imaging integrity uh, and a standard for their images. So they generally leave that text uh, to be displayed. But again, as I said, you can remove it if you want. At this point, you can save the image. So uh, I'll click Save Entire Image. And just a few things to note here. Um, we save the uh, calibrated image under a different file name. So we take the original file name and add the words Chroma Cal Calibrated to the end. We also save the image in the same format that it was uh, provided. So uh, we can process all TIFF and JPEG. So in this case, the original image was TIFF. We can save it as TIFF. We do have the option, though, that you can save that image if you're concerned about image size as a JPEG, the calibrated image. But please note, we do not modify at all the original image. We create a copy. We calibrate that copy. Just one other thing to, to mention here, you can also look at a field, a, a region of interest by using that same drag method, holding the mouse button down. Um, you'll then have an expanded portion of that uh, region of interest. Um, see very nice detail within the image. But you'll also notice that an extra uh, button popped up, which is saved cropped image. So that would allow you to specifically save the region of interest that you're looking at right now and it does it with the words Chroma Cal Calibrated plus cropped at the end of it. So you can save multiple cropped uh, versions. You can save the entire image. It's all uh, your flexibility to do it. So that covers single image calibration. It's certainly powerful in its own right. But let me go into uh, batch processing, because it's really the combination of standardizing the image for consistency, white balancing, brightness, and being able to do it in just a, a few mouse clicks for an entire folder's worth of images uh, that are really the positives that we hear about the, uh, amongst several of them, that we hear about using Chromacal. So to batch process, you simply identify the source of your, the folder that con contains your original images. And on the left-hand side, as soon as you identify the source, all those uncalibrated images will be listed. And you can certainly highlight them and look at them individually. Um, or you can, to just finish the process, you can identify a destinations folder. I'll use the same folder because, again, I don't overwrite the originals. And I click Process Images. And what ChromaCal will now go and do is go through those eight images and process and save uh, those eight images so that you can then view them in really any image viewer. And what people have typically commented on is uh, the time it takes generally to open up Photoshop, um, they'll find that the batch process is completed by that time. So very, very quickly they can do uh, a, lo a whole boatload of images in just a few steps. So when you want to view your images, again, you can go to a, a traditional image viewer, but we also have embedded in the software a ChromaCal viewer. And this allows you to look at any TIFF and JPEG images, whether they're uh, calibrated by ChromaCal or not. So I'll open up a folder, and you can open multiple folders if you want. But you'll see all the images listed on the left. Again, you can highlight them to view each one. You can also uh, sort the list so that only, or filter the list, so you only see calibrated images by selecting this box here. Um, when you select an image, you have the ability to uh, look at it full screen like before, um, zoom in to any of those uh, same things that we looked at on single image calibration. Uh, but at this point, you're not calibrating anything. Uh, you're viewing it. Now, we did add recently, though, an additional feature here that if you do look at a region of interest, and you want to save that region of interest, you can save the cropped image right here. And again, you can save it with TIFF or JPEG format. So a lot of flexibility even in viewing um, to save various uh, uh, additions or regions of interest within a given specimen image. So let me end with just a couple more uh, comments. We talked about linearity uh, before and the ability to hyperlink to that uh, 
that plot and look at the red, green, and blue channels. We've also added a feature under the tools menu that allows you to track the underlying statistics in this calibration slide image. And this came up by uh, uh, a request from a user of a whole slide imaging system who said that uh, those black boxes, he's often concerned that he can't monitor the, uh, uh, the compliance or the drift in those systems over time. Um, so this allows him to capture uh, calibration slide images over time and then do a comparison. Um, so it's as simple as just clicking that calibration slide uh, tool. Uh, it'll then save that into a Excel or a work a spreadsheet format. And you can then bring up that spreadsheet and quickly look at the underlying statistics on all that calibration image. And what you would do over time is simply compare these numbers to um, an image taken at a different period of time. And lastly, let me just uh, highlight one other item. On the upper left-hand side, you may have noticed when we started, our mode was color bright field, still is. Uh, but we recently added a new mode called macro imaging. And what this is really intended to do is allow you to um, do the same color calibration or image consistency process that I just went through, except in this case it's with reflected light macroscopic sized images. And it does use a different target. In this case it uses a, uh, we offer two different size, standard sizes um, of a 24 patch target. But the process that you go by in using um, this uh, macro target is no different. You go into macro imaging mode and then open the uh, calibration, the macro target. You align it. At this point I need to make a few adjustments. And then you open a macroscopic image. Right away it's calibrated. So the same flow, the same workflow, the same features all exist for macroscopic imaging. It's just the target that is different. All right, Mark, I think that covers it. So I will turn it back over to uh, Mark Clammer. All right, thank you, Mark. Um, I'm sure each of us with the name Mark is confused matters a little bit, but uh, to say Mark, we both answer. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. McNulty, for that demonstration. Um, the rest of this time really is dedicated to your, the audience's uh, questions. Please submit them using the questions window in the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, you're also welcome to contact me directly uh, anytime, uh, even after the webinar, or visit our ChromaCal website for an array of product, additional product information. While the questions are coming in, we want to tell you about a new case study uh, that we have available for Chroma Cal. Uh, it's called Time Savings Image Acquisition and Preparation for Publication by Dr. Dawn Dawson at Case Western Reserve University. Uh, and you can access this case study on our website. Uh, the take home message in this, and I'm not going to read it for you, uh, but it's, the take home message is, is pretty straightforward. With Chroma Cal, Dr. Dawson found that she was able to save over 90% of her image processing time. So she was already processing some images for manuscript preparation and, and analysis. And with ChromaCal, she could save a tremendous amount of time and effort. I also wanted to uh, mention a peer-reviewed article on ChromaCal in the April issue of the Journal of Histochemistry and Cytochemistry. Uh, just visit, again, our website uh, for a link to that article. Uh, Jerry, I do see here that your name appears second. Your co-author on this paper. Would you mind sharing a quick summary? Sure. Uh, we looked at a number of things, but mostly we looked at image inconsistency uh, that has to do with acquisition and also how consistently images were made when comparing Photoshop with ChromaCal. And finally, uh, how you could take uh, inconsistent images, make them consistent in ChromaCal, and you can see that in this particular uh, image or a series of images that, uh, that from, the, from uh, simulated microscope sessions, we were able to correct uh, the images using the ChromaCal product. And what we found is that you can actually do optical intensity measurements uh, after correction and get valid results. And we also found that uh, when you're doing morphometry, uh, such as measuring sizes or, and that sort of thing, 
uh, that you could use just a single threshold and you wouldn't have to subjectively decide uh, to use a different threshold depending on how dark or light or improperly color balanced the image is. So it uh, worked uh, uh, very well. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, I think we can all see that this may have significant implications in um, computer-assisted analysis, automated analysis. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so thanks again, Jerry. Um, all right. Uh, if you haven't had a chance yet, please enter your um, questions into the control panel. Um, and uh, I have a couple of questions that are in, so let's let's answer some of these questions. Um, first one is: Does calibration need to be performed every time you change magnification? That's a really good question, and uh, um, the easy answer is. It depends. Um, no, we absolutely recommend that you you would. That would be the uh, the perfect thing to do. Uh, you can't guarantee that your uh, color correction on each objective uh, are identical. So uh, we recommend that. However, um, ChromaCal does perform automatic white balance and brightness matching in your images when it when it um, does its calibration. So uh, that adds an extra polishing step to, uh, to the standardization of those images, creating even better consistency. Um, let's see, any other questions? Um, here's one. Recent FDA draft guidance for whole slide imaging systems mentions uh, color sampling sizes uh, greater than 100 pixels. Uh, what is your sampling size? Um, I'll, I'll address that as well. Um, I think this just refers to those, um, those little boxes in the, um, in the matrix image. And um, the exact number of pixels really depends on the pixel density of your image. Uh, but generally, we're sampling over 700 pixels for each uh, color circle that's in that matrix. So that's well in excess of the, the recommended lower limit for, uh, for the FDA. Any other questions? Uh, again, feel free to contact me um, after the, the webinar. My uh, email address is shown here on the screen. Um, I uh, also visit our website at chromacal.com. Uh, we will be making the uh, uh, recording of this webinar available, and you'll be uh, informed when that is ready to view through our website. So um, without any further questions, I'd like to extend a big thank you to our guest, Jerry Sedgwick, uh, as well as to everyone who joined us. Thank you very much. At, at the webinar today. Um, and this concludes the webinar. Have a great day. Thank you.